inheritance to the descendants. When wind whips ragged clouds to shreds and die-hard stars reel in the spaces between, I think of you, bones, teeth, hair, even now brooding in the grain's kernel. I am part of a legion. We are like stones in a sack, a ballast. Earthquakes slide past. The moon hangs in the wrong part of the sky. Moths come in from the fields, stay for years, spread on the walls like medallions. We endure rich, wretched cold, snowless winters. When one of us perishes, two more spring forth. We learn to grow new hands, feet, arms. We're strong as Mithridates, hide our monstrosities, let them live. We are harvesting strangely beautiful mutations. We present to you this sphere to save or spend as you wish. The man turns to see who Lauren is waving over. It is the woman who read a story titled Something. He hadn't really heard what she read, and what he had heard was surprising. There had to be more to her than that one piece. The ease she seemed to have with herself impressed him more. The way she was able to laugh at herself, too short to reach the microphone, he liked that. The way she stood and moved and spoke, he liked that too. Now she was standing beside him, smelling like clouds, skirts swooshing about her now still knees. The woman greeted Lauren with a hug. Lauren introduced her to the man. I really thought you two should meet. The woman nodded once at the man, maintaining eye contact, and said how nice it was to meet him and how impressed with his words she had been. The man thanked her, exchanged a few final remarks with Lauren, and said, well, I'd better go, bye. With a wave over his shoulder, he was gone. The woman watched his torn jeans and worn in flannel walk away for just a beat longer than she should have. He is a remarkable writer, isn't he, Lauren? Lauren agreed and said he had been her student a few times over now. Speaking of, you should take a literature class I'm teaching next semester. They talked until the room had nearly emptied out. People were stacking up chairs around them as they said their goodbyes. The woman stepped through the door into a sea of people huddled under the portico. Raindrops thick with music pinged off marble stairs, discarded leaves, the fingertips of bare branches. The tall buildings reflected in puddles on the red brick of the courtyard. Undeterred, she made her way through people like a ball in the handheld mazes that littered every birthday party goodie bag of her 1980s childhood. The man caught sight of her as she neared the line where, the, where dry met wet. She smiled, nodded once, and stepped into the torrent. Thunder rumbled. He thought he heard her laugh. Zigzags lit the sky, illuminating her figure as she disappeared around the corner. The tip-tap of rain overrode the tip-tap of her boots. Her curly hair was washed straight. She laughed at how ridiculous she was as she let it all wash over her. Thank you. Darkness dances between parallel atmospheres, surrendering its breath to dawn. The scattering illumination of twilight gracefully gives birth to a new day as the first ray of light cascades over the horizon, meeting me at its shore. This eternal rising, an ever-present sacred energy, calming, focused, restorative. Here, in quiet contemplation, I am by myself, just myself, but never alone. Life is an art form, an epic voyage of rediscovering the artist as work of art. Weathering the storm is par for the course. When the storms are brewing, dark clouds in tow, and the winds are howling, surely you know it's a matter of time before a swift flashing rain beats down on you hard with a grip like a chain. No one plans to be here, but when you're here, you know it. A turbulent past must be released from deep in the mansions of your soul, where dark hearts dispel midnight dreams, 
We're crying. The ultimate human emotion resides. Where healing becomes wisdom, and wisdom becomes strength. The collective past always pales in comparison to the future. It's the genius of being. Everything we do is related to everything we do. Nothing in nature is by accident. In the beginning, there was nothing. In the end, there will again be nothing. In between is everything. Embrace this moment because the rest of your life is always 100%. Thank you. I nearly always got a large cup of delicious coffee for my breakfast from the immense shining copper kettle of a great Creole mulatto woman. Cher, he loves my café au lait, every cup of it. He sniffs comme ça, sips slowly, no hurry. I put in beaucoup de sucre for him. He talks with me, uh, asks about mes enfants. Un jour, he admire my tignon. Another, he likes my apron. But there is nothing lascif about him, pas du tout. When I am busy with the customer, he stand aside. Comme un chat, he studied the fish, basket of crab, bucket of oyster, vivand on the hook, les petits oiseaux singing in their pretty cage. Quelle joie! Très rare, pour un homme. It cross his face like wind on that river. When he finish, he tip his chapeau and bow to me. C'est vrai, cher. No American done such before. Part six, the beginning. And this is a true story. The beginning. He would have known about it. He would have smelled it. His neighborhood is rife with pens the slaves call prisons. The smell of bacon mingled with smoke, lye, and fills the air. Bacon bulks up the merchandise. Its grease, applied eternally, gives luster to the skin and teeth. Five short blocks from his boarding house stands the showroom, surrounded by a 12-foot wall topped with broken glass. The windows are barred and the doors lock only from the outside. He would have walked by. He would have heard them. Every morning at 10, a new lot is brought from the pens into the yard behind the showroom. They are dressed in blue cotton suits and calico dresses, their hair combed, faces watch, washed. They are instructed to look lively, to play the violin or dance if they know how. They line up by height, men along one wall, women along the other. He goes in. No one imagines he isn't a customer. The showroom accommodates a hundred slaves, has finished floors, a few chairs and three doors, one to the yard, one to the office, one to the street. The merchandise stands on blocks and are required to turn slowly, spread their arms, answer questions about their health, age, skills, appetite, previous owners. Customers may examine their teeth or pinch the skin on the back of their hands to determine age. Scars from whippings are considered signs of unruliness and decrease their value. He meets the eye of a man whose dignity has not been snuffed out. When he leaves New Orleans, he takes a poster of a slave auction with him. Back in Brooklyn, he hangs the poster over his desk, spends the summer recruiting subscribers for a new paper, The Free Man. In his little day book, he writes, I am the poet of slaves and of the masters of slaves. I am the poet of the body and I am and the grass begins to grow. Mm -hmm. 
She spent hours singing about screaming silently. She spent hours parsing out the words and the melody. But I never even heard a word she said Till she was gone Last night I spent with her I swear I've never slept so soundly Her shifting body, her words, her love, it meant nothing to me. But I, I missed her when she was gone. I swear I, I missed her when she was gone. Listen to me She listened to me Remembered everything I ever did or said And where she kept it all I'll never know stuck her own arm through her own chest and reached me where I stood ah. Now I find myself in a sleep I cannot fill with rest or dreams. Day in and night out, I feel the shadows of her words, how they bend and lean. And I, I want to know her. I want to know her more I want to love her differently Now that she's gone And I How could I know? How could I have known? Thank you. The fires of spring burned to warm the seeds slowly, slowly, burning low, burning slow, warming, coaxing, beckoning the life to grow, sending out the root, the sprout, let it spring out. The waters of spring sprinkled, poured, streamed onto the earth bringing forth birth, swelling, thrilling, willing sap to rise into the branch, into the twig, let it spill into bud. 
the winds of spring sang the leaves under the trees, weaving and cleaving, sheathing bare branches, frilling the landscape, greening the brown, enhancing the springing. Let it be bringing forth. The ground of spring, soaked, warmed, urged, cushioning growth, tenderly clasping, gently grasping each sweet shoot to become itself the fulfillment, the fitting. Let it be whole. Beltane is bursting, is thrusting, is thirsting, is everywhere now, all that is fecund and fulsome, letting us know the presence is now. The pleasure, the treasure, the sweet time is here. Thank you. I sit on the edge of a hospice bed, reading aloud from a children's book, a Bible story with pictures in large print. She was a teacher, they say, before her mind went away to a place in the desert, and now her thoughts have all dried up. As I read, my hands start shaking from the MS and can't remember what to do next. Then a thin white arm floats over my shoulder with long, bony fingers and turns the page. Lazarus, I read, had been in the tomb for four days. He begins to tell about fishing, how they'll do that together. Then he thinks, wait, I have to tell him what a fish is. A large mouth with flesh behind it, a stretch of muscle spangled with scales, and about water where you swam, little fish, before we all welcomed you into air. It will take time to make sense of boats, how things fall through water, how water can be death, but a fish hovers like magic, and a boat settles onto the water like a body on a bed part in, part over. He falls silent. Abe sleeps again, a warm weight on his chest. Explanation drifts on out to sea, and he too sleeps. Thank you. Open the book to the missing page. Let the bird out of the cage. Follow its flight to the highest branch where, lo and behold, it starts to dance. For just the right sentiment, look behind City Hall where curious graffiti has appeared on the wall. Wish for something you've never seen writes the genie in the limousine. The door to darkness bears a sign that welcomes all who wish to find the source of creativity while risking only sanity. For just the right sentiment, look behind City Hall where curious graffiti has appeared on the wall. Don't think twice, just pay the price writes the madman with the loaded dice. Seven-story building on a dead-end street. Second-rate Romeo trying to be discreet. Afraid of heights and afraid of love. Climbing the fire escape to the balcony above. But just the right sentiment, look behind City Hall where curious graffiti has appeared on the wall. Both sunshine and lightning light up the skies, writes the lady in waiting with her fiery eyes. 
one dapper dude in a three-piece suit with an attaché case full of loot realizing life won't be quite the same steps in front of the five o'clock train but just the right sentiment look behind city hall where curious graffiti has appeared on the wall live for the moment whenever you can writes yet another forgotten man Mollipop lady with a brand new baby. Her world is so carefree when it used to be crazy. Caressing her carriage down tree-lined streets. Blowing kisses to every creature she meets. For just the right sentiment, look behind City Hall. Where curious graffiti has appeared on the wall. You're born, you're bathed, you're hung out to dry writes the old man with a tear in his eye. Is the question truly worth more than the answer? How much longer will you have to ponder? Do you really wish to enter heaven's gate? Will wit or wisdom decide your fate? For just the right sentiment, look behind City Hall, <coughs> where curious graffiti has appeared on a wall. A lifetime is more time than you need, writes the wise kid no one believed. <laughs> Thank you. In Mexico, they built him from dust and rattlesnake skin, scarred his lips and brows caramel and pink. The white ranches taught him to work the pocket knife to pistol a pregnant serpent, split her belly into, in two deep drags. When his hermanos fled north, they sent silver coins to him in moon-drunk waves. And so he too left for, Ameri for America, who from the backseat floor looked purple in the morning. America became his new wife in a bedbug-laced ghetto who ate his square body and manos indocumentados as he held a white girl through a few lousy bachadas in the crepe littered corner of a dance hall on Independence Avenue. Oh, te amo or te quiero. Both dissolve on the tongue. What does it matter what he whispers to his gabacha? Thank you. It's late in the evening and I'm stressed out, tired, and beat. A morning presentation, obligations to meet. Then it's one more snuggle me, one more hugging me, one more kissing me, and one more loving me. I'm too tired loving you. I'm too tired loving you. I need to find a lover. Once under the covers, falls asleep. I need to find a lover. Once under the covers, falls asleep. enough to drink I jump out of the shower I'm shaving in my towel by the sink good rhyme then it's one more snuggle me one more hugging me one more kissing me and one more loving me I'm too tired loving you I'm too tired loving you I need to find a lover once under the covers falls asleep I need to find a lover once under the covers falls asleep. <laughs> well, I fell asleep on the train and I missed 
bus stop, it starts to rain, and I get to work, I'm half insane, when I find it's Saturday, what am I doing work on Saturday? Saturday. I'm too tired loving you. There's a pattern here. There's too tired loving you. I'm too tired loving you. I'm too tired loving you. I'm too tired, 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 loving you. Thank you.